Okay, I've put together a little video to demonstrate the way that I like to edit audio for podcasts and some of the radio work that I've done. So this is a bit of my accumulated knowledge over a number of years and um, some of the insights and ideas and approaches and a few tips and tricks as well. Okay, so our first stage is really setting ourselves up for recording. Uh, even before we can edit a podcast, we actually have to create some audio files. Now, all the podcasts that I've been involved with, or, or almost all of them, um, either as a, as a guest or a host or a co-host, have been remote recording situations. What I mean by that is that I'm here in my studio and the other person is somewhere else and we're talking to each other via Skype. Now, that's quite cool. Skype's a wonderful tool. But the problem with that kind of approach is that you're going to end up, if you record just your side of the Skype recording, you're going to end up with one file that's your own file that sounds good through your microphone with a natural sound and another side that's going to sound kind of terrible because it's been compressed. It's gone through the Skype tube that has channeled it through the interwebs and it's come out the other side sounding kind of like some sort of telephonic garble really. So the solution is to record on your side and also have the other person record on their side and then you grab both files you can share them using Dropbox or FTP or depending on the size of your files maybe with email and then combine them in the way that we're going to look at later and the tool that I like to use to do this is Audio Hijack Pro. This allows me to grab my Skype recording. It allows the other person to grab the recording to Skype on their side. And then it creates a file that's very easy to split so that you only end up with the two quality recordings and the compressed garbled Skype tube stuff can just simply go away into the bin. And the key feature to look at here is to look at this advanced tab here. Open that and make sure that you've ticked include audio inputs and split between channels. That means that once you've finished your recording, your side recorded through your microphone will be on the left channel, and what's come through the interwebs via Skype will be on the right channel. And you can then combine your file and your um, whoever you're working with, combine their file together and be able to get rid of the junk that we don't really want and just have the two good quality files playing in your final recording. Okay, so let's say that we've um, recorded a podcast. Now what we want to do is we want to assemble our assets together and get into the process of editing. Now, as a parent, I'm obsessed about making everything I do interruption proof. And I, I think it's a valid concern, not just for parents, but for all of us really, um, it's the bedrock of any professional approach to your work. Can you cope with an interruption? Will, will you be able to continue or will it all fall apart and then you'll be struggling to figure out what you're doing? So the first thing I like to do is I like to create a folder on my desktop and I like to call that. Come over here, get over here. Okay, I like to give this a name and uh, I normally call it whatever is the podcast that I'm working on. So for the process of this, we're going to call it, uh, we're going to wonder why I can't spell properly, and we're going to call it podcast demo. And that's it. It's a simple stage, but this is kind of like where we will corral our assets to begin the process. Okay, so now we need to start dealing with our assets. Now, once you record with Audio Hijack, um, it has a fairly standard way of naming the files and you can play with that. Um, I don't tend to, I tend to prefer to rename the files once I'm at the process of editing because I, I know exactly from here where they're going to end up. Now the, the standard structure spits the files out with a name like what you can see here, Skype 2015-0603 and then an identifier number for the recording. Now, once you start combining that with the um, files that your, your partner or co-host has sent you, you're going to start to see that these files all kind of have the same sort of name. And it's pretty easy to get confused after a while if you're dealing with a whole bunch of files that almost look identical at first glance. So what you want to do is come up with some kind of naming convention. Um, and you want to avoid doing something like calling them Podcast 1 or Podcast 2. 
something that's quick like that because if you do have then eventually you're going to end up with hard drives that have this exactly the same so what i normally like to do is i normally like to use a convention like host podcast episode um so this one i'll just i'll just show you this was a home file that we're going to play with so i'm going to call this home underscore podcast demo and i'm going to call this one away underscore podcast demo okay and then i'm going to wonder why that first one didn't take there we go that's it and so that way at least now you've got some titles that you can use in the next stages as you start to clean up these files and prepare them for editing Okay, so the next step in our process is to split the files. Now, what we get out of um, Audio Hijack from the Skype recording is a dual mono. It's not a stereo file for those of you who are interested in that kind of technicality for the three people watching this video who care. Um, it's a dual mono, which means you have on one side, you have the, your home recording and on the other side, you have your away recording. Now, there's a lot of ways to split um, the file, but the, my preferred way of doing it is to use Adobe Audition. Um, so I'll just go scroll through my doc. For those of you who love to look at what other people have in their doc, I'm, I always love doing that uh, when I watch these kind of videos. Um, and we open Adobe Audition. Now, the reason why I like to use Adobe Audition for this is because this split is really important that you uh, not only split the file, but you also split the dependencies of the file. Um, and I guess it's one of those things that if, if you understand that, you'll get that. And if you don't, then don't worry about it. Just the important thing is to use a tool that allows you to split it well. Um, there's a lot of free tools online that you can find to do this. Um, you can do this with Audacity. You can obviously do it in Logic or GarageBand, but I like to use Adobe Audition for this. So the first thing I do is go and open um, our podcast demo files. And I'm going to open the home podcast demo file and then immediately says this opens you can see that the two sides of this recording have a very different sonic character visually you can see this straight away and, and this is why I wanted to to take a little time to show you this this home recording you'll notice that it's it's not as loud um, and it, it it sort of has what if you're used to using audio looks like a more natural kind of um, dispersion of the sound whereas this one which is the Skype recording of the person who's on the other side is really maxed out. It's, I mean, it's so loud that every single one of these points is a horrible distortion. Um, and there's not a lot of sonic contrast between the loudest and quietest bits. And if you try to edit this um, later on down the road, if you try to do anything to try and move you towards a nice radio sound, as it were, it's just going to be horrible. So that's why we like to get rid of that and just use this nice, natural sounding home recording. Um, so then what we need to do is we need to export that. And this, this export window is really, really important. Um, the first thing I like to do is to change the file name. So at the moment, it's Home Podcast Demo 01. Um, I'm going to change that to Home Podcast Demo Mono. Okay. Um, this is where you set the uh, where you're going to save this to. So we're going to save this to the podcast demo folder. Um, this is your format. Now, this is really important here. Um, if you set your format, you need to set a couple of things here. The first is to set your channels to mono because all you want is one side of this, which is mono. You don't want stereo and obviously you don't want to try and create some weird um, 5.1 surround sound file. And this is where your mixing is. So the channel we want is the left channel. So we can slide this. We can get a we can get a mix of you know both sides, but you want nothing from the right. So this has to be set to zero, and you want one hundred percent of the left mix. Um, and then you can choose the format setting. I by default save everything into Wave because I tend to like to work in Wave in Logic Pro. Leave comments below if you think I'm an idiot for doing that or I should be using AIFF or some other format, but Wave is lossless. So we're trying to extract the best quality we can out of this MP3 and upsample it for those who are interested in uh, that sort of stuff. And you have an estimation of the file size here. This is tiny because we're only dealing with one minute of audio. Obviously, if you're dealing with a podcast that is long and goes for 15 minutes or half an hour, then your file size is going to get bigger. You hit OK, 
and then uh, it exports the file uh, very quick for a small file like this and that's done so we can go and close i'm using the menus upstairs <laughs> so you can see how i'm using the keystrokes then we want to open the uh, basically do the same thing again we import that we can see here obviously this is uh, a louder file but um, this looks more natural whereas as you saw before um, the recording on my side had smaller peaks and this has been uh, distorted to the max going through Skype's compression algorithms. So again we want to uh, export that file. This is Away Podcast Demo 01 so we're going to rename that Away Podcast Demo Mono. Um, browse, uh, it's given me a there. Um, so we're going to go back to this location, save, uh, check that our settings are okay and um, he exported two files ready for the next process. Okay, so the next step, and, and I think this is a pretty important step in making your podcast recordings sound good, is to apply a little bit of denoising and get rid of some of the background noise if you at all possibly can. Ideally, we'd all have a decent sounding room that we could record in um, that was free from, from noise, whether it's, you know, uh, background noise, air conditioners or refrigerators or, or outside noise like traffic. But not everybody has that luxury. So let's assume for a moment that you're working with a file that has a little bit of background noise and uh, you want to clean it up. And, uh, and I guess we could probably do a whole other video at some point in the future about how to get a decent recording um, for your podcast files. But what I've done is I've clipped a little bit of the demo that we're using just so we can focus on a, a couple of issues in the background noise. And, and when I play this file, um, we'll, we'll hear a couple of things that are going on. How are you doing? Good. It's a little bit noisy and windy where you are. Now, one of the first things that you'll notice is that you could actually hear my voice, even though this is meant to be the other side of the recording. Uh, that's because the person I'm working with hasn't plugged their headphones in. And it's really, really crucial that you have like a pre-flight checklist of things that you do before a recording. One of which is making sure that you've got your headphones in and that you've muted the sound in the room so that your microphone isn't picking up the bleed from um, the other side of the call, as it were. Because getting rid of that in a recording is a, is a really long, slow, uh, tedious process. And if you leave that in, you're going to have like this kind of a weird echo flanging uh, chorusing sort of effect which is which is not nice and sounds kind of terrible um, the other thing that you would have noticed is that there is an awful lot of background noise that's kind of why I commented on it so the tool I like to use is um, isotope rx4 advanced um, this is a fantastic specialist tool for audio post-production there are noise reduction algorithms and processes um, in other bits of software, but I find that this is the one that I like to use the most um, and it gives me really great results. And part of the reason for that is this denoise module. Um, and this is a really spectacular piece of, piece of uh, software that goes in, identifies the noise and try and leaves the, tries to leave the voice audio intact. Um, so what we do is we, uh, we tell it to learn the piece that we've got it quickly goes through, processes it, and then we can preview. How are you doing? Good. It's a little bit noisy and windy. Now, uh, what I'm going to do now is um, actually play that and click in and out of the bypass so you can hear the difference. How are you doing? Good. It's a little bit noisy and windy where you are. So you can immediately see that it's made a pretty dramatic reduction. Now, you can play with the threshold and reduction amount um, to get even more reduction, but you've got to be a little bit careful because it does start to roll the high end off, which makes the voice a little bit muffled. Um, but you really have to push it hard to get into the weird robotic voices that that other noise reduction um, algorithms and pieces of software um, get you into. So I'll preview that and play with the threshold and reduction a little bit. How are you doing? Good. It's a little bit noisy and windy where you are. So you can see there's a pretty dramatic amount of reduction in the noise there by the end of that. How are you doing? Good. It's a little bit noisy and windy where you are. Now that's at the extreme levels, but obviously um, you can hear the difference that that's making, and that's already on a, on a recording that's that's not very good um, at all and and not isolated. Um, and this background noise is really a, a big issue because 
it wears out your listeners. So trying to listen to a podcast that goes for 15 minutes or a, a long podcast that goes for half an hour or more with a lot of background noise, trying to figure out what people are saying and trying to, your brain is working to cancel out the, the air conditioners and the trucks and the construction and everything else. It's just really, really tiresome. So if you can find some kind of algorithm to help you do noise reduction, it will definitely improve the quality of your podcast recordings. Okay, so we've prepped our files, we've split our files, we've done some noise reduction on our files. Now we're finally ready to bring them into our um, audio editing software. Um, there's a whole bunch of different programs that we could use to do this. Um, Audacity, GarageBand will all work. I prefer Logic Pro because it's the one that I'm used to. I work with this every day in my studio um, and I'm really familiar with Logic Pro. Uh, but if I was starting out in podcast editing today, this, I would probably be taking a good look at Adobe Audition as well um, because Adobe Audition really has some fantastic post-production tools. But I like to use Logic Pro. And one of the things that I also have to say at this stage is that this is really where you want to start to think about creating templates for anything that you do repeatedly. Um, I have a podcast editing template that I, I fine tune and I, I work on every probably about every six months or so based on what I'm learning. And having a template for a, any kind of work that you repeatedly do will save you a lot of time. I think having a template like this saves me really at least 15 minutes every single time I edit a podcast. And it also saves the mental strain of trying to remember and and work out what works for the files that you're working with. So once once you've got a process, then you can start to create something that is that is going to be effective for the um, work that you're doing. Now, um, once we're in Logic Pro, um, uh, what I like to do is I like to add the audio files, and I'm going to pick up here. Um, I'm going to pick up the uh, um, the away demo. Uh, mono, the home demo motto, um, and I'm also going to pick up the original um, podcast uh, file that came out of Skype. Um, and even though we're not going to use that in the final edit, um, it's, a port it's important at this stage to have that here so that we can do some um, comparison and alignment, which is, uh, happens in the next stage. Now, once we're here, I, I like to give these files some colors. Um, I don't know what that is, and you don't need to know either. Um, so I like to give these files uh, some colors because that makes it easier for me to do my my editing at a later stage. You know, it gives your brain a little bit of a break, as it were. Um, then we're going to grab, uh, we're not going to grab them all at the same time. We're going to slide uh, that into the center here. Um, we're going to slide the home one into its own track at the top. And we're going to slide the away track down here. Um, and that's really it at the moment. Uh, the files are now in and the next stage will be aligning them and doing our editing. OK, so the next stage uh, and a really critical stage again is to align the files that we have in our audio editor. Now, the reason why the files don't automatically align is because uh, when we hit Skype record, um, we don't simultaneously hit it ourselves and whoever we're talking to. There's always a little bit of a lag or a difference. So you'll see here, for example, this uh, audio blob and this audio blob are aligned. And that's because these are the recordings from my side. So this is this is my voice that we uh, split to mono before. And this is my voice on the common call. Um, but what you'll see and what you'll hear in a moment is that... Um, my co-host says hello here, but then also says hello here. So it's a, it's a bit of a jumbled mess. Let, let's let's have a listen. Hello. Good evening. How are you? I am good. Hello. Hold on two seconds. Hello. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to align this blob to this blob. So we're we're aligning audio on both sides. Um, and of course, we don't have enough room at the end here to really slide this nicely. So what I like to do is I like to um, split this file, uh, get rid of that. And then I can grab this and uh, move it across. And I can really focus down on my um, cycle here, my loop cycle, to make sure they're really well aligned. Hello. Hello. So they're not quite there yet. So let's slide them along a little bit more. Hello. Hello. Okay, they're disappearing into each other. Now, um, once we've done that, um, then we really want to mute this common call because we don't want to hear that anymore. Um, what we want to hear is we just simply want to be hearing... 
uh, both sides of the recording. Uh, our original intention was um, uh, both sides clean. Hello. Good evening. How are you? Okay, so now we're, we're on our way to being able to uh, edit that. Now, um, one of the things as well is that we, we want to, uh, at this stage, really take a little bit of time to make sure that we edit any other bits that we want out of the file, uh, make some notes for bits where you've maybe had a break while you're recording to discuss uh, the next part of the recording. Um, it's up to you how much you want to edit out ums and ahs and whatever else. Um, but it's a good idea to keep this common call um, file in there for alignment as you get along, especially on long recordings, because sometimes if your Skype call breaks up a little bit and comes back in, you'll find that the alignment has drifted again and uh, you'll want to do something about that. Um, so the last thing that I really like to do here is I like to add um, a little bit of a, of a fade at the beginning and the end of the files, um, just simply so that we don't get a click as they come in. So there's a little bit of silence. Uh, we have basically a fade to silence at the beginning and the end of the files so that they're nice and clean once we're into the next stage. And uh, then once we bounce down our final recording. Okay, before we move on to the end of the recording process, I just wanted to show you a couple of uh, little insights into the way that I like to edit audio. Um, uh, these are a few things that help me speed up my workflow and also create the kind of sound, the, the sonic signature that I like for, for recorded voice. Now, what you'll notice up here at the top um, is that I've set my time clock to seconds and minutes. Normally when we do uh, editing for music, we work in bars and beats, but for audio, I like to set this up immediately in seconds and minutes because bars and beats are irrelevant, really. And one of the things that I set up uh, in my template is I customize the toolbar so that I can uh, utilize something in Logic Pro called VeriSpeed, which literally allows me to speed up or slow down the playback of the audio. So if we listen to this little uh, loop that I have here in, in normal speed, you'll hear that it sounds something like this. Phenomenal. How are you doing? Now, if we listen back to that with the various speed activated. Phenomenal. How are you doing? Phenomenal. How are you doing? Phenomenal. How are you doing? <laughs> I can never get enough of that. Now, that highly caffeinated voice sounds a little bit weird, and you might be thinking, why would you want to use that? Well, sometimes you, you may have made a note while you're recording that someone had a coughing fit, maybe at the 21-minute mark. Well, this allows you to to get close to that and then play it back and identify exactly where in the audio it is that you want to start doing your your white glove surgery. Um, also, if you're a fan of putting on you know, podcast notes so that um, listeners can fast forward maybe to a certain point in the podcast which they're that they're interested in listening to, this allows you to listen back to the whole podcast at a, at a faster speed. So you're still actually doing the work of listening to everything but you're not taking you know, the, the real time to listen to it. You're listening to it uh, much faster. And you can set that very speed up uh, you want it. I've, I've got this obviously really, really fast. Um, normally I like to have 70%. It speeds it up a little so that you miss anything. And then of course you just deactivate the various to a normal, normal time. A couple of other things that I like to utilize um, uh, in my uh, template and importing. You'll notice in the mixer I've set up sends to allow me to do parallel uh, processing. One of phenomenal. How are you doing? Which is just phenomenal. Barely catching um, the peaks, and, and that parallel compression keeps things fairly natural sounding, um, but also means that you're just um, maybe the bits in your voice where you've uh, gone up and down a little bit in your tune, um, or your proximity to the microphone, or you've just got a little bit tired uh, during the recording, um, especially if you're working with people who are not um, professional. Uh, voice workers. <laughs> Sorry for that. And the other thing that I like to do, which is really important to me, is to add a little bit of um, parallel reverb. So I send both sides of the recording to a reverb that's just emulating a very natural room sound. But that kind of mixing the wash of the reverb from voice, both voices together slightly tricks your mind into thinking that um, the two voices are emanating from the same room and, and it just gives it a, this ever so slight natural quality to the final edit um, and you know you've got to be careful with this not to apply too much or it suddenly starts to sound fake um, but a little bit of this going on in the background especially when 
you get a little bit of action in the conversation and people are talking over each, over each other really makes it sound very natural and the last thing that i like to do on the mass on my final output um uh, mix down channel is to add another eq with lots of character and i really like to use this helios 96 plugin from uad um, to give me a really round tone um, and also um, the pro l um, limiter from fab filter which is a very clean very natural sounding limiter that just ups the levels a little bit and both of those together um, give you much more of a, what I consider to be a radio kind of sound. So if we take another listen to this. Phenomenal. How are you doing? And then we activate both of these. Phenomenal. How are you doing? Ph that, that, that to me is much more of a, of a polished professional radio kind of sound. Now, the last thing that you really need to do in your audio editor is actually export your files or bounce them down um, into something that you can upload to the interwebs so that people can listen to your podcast. Now, there's I've, I've focused down here on the bounce window in Logic just to show you a couple of things um, that are worth noting. Uh, the first of which is that you need to decide on the bit rate that you're going to encode your podcast in. Now, I, I tend to hover around 112 kbps, which if you are encoding music um, is a guaranteed recipe for something that's going to sound horrible. But for audio, it's not too bad. In fact, you can probably go down to 96 kbps um, for pure speech, and it's still okay. A lot, of, a lot of BBC podcasts, for example, are encoded at this kind of rate. Um, the thing is, if you go to higher rates, uh, like 256 or 320, you'll get a better quality um, sound, obviously. But if your podcast is 15 minutes, 20 minutes or longer, you're going to end up with really huge file sizes that are unwieldy and difficult to manage both on your upload, depending on your uh, internet speed, and also it's, it's going to create a headache for your listeners. So 112 kbps um, for me, for anything up to an hour, um, works pretty well. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to look at is this write ID3 tags and your ID3 settings. This is the metadata that is encoded into your um, podcast. So if you can think of it this way. If you've ever imported a CD in, into your um, iTunes library or your music library and found that it just, uh, you know, it's all over the place and the genres don't match with other genres that you have or the, the track listings seem weird or the... Um, the artist names um, on the tracks seem odd, then that's because of the way this metadata has been encoded, this ID3 uh, metadata that is um, that is supposed to be on all MP3 files. And this is really important if you're going to try and upload um, your podcast to an aggregator like iTunes or Stitcher, um, that you have your podcast data, your show title, um, your artist title, your genre, um, copyright information if you're using that and certainly your URL as well to identify your podcast and you want to take the time to type all that stuff in make sure that it's correct make sure that there's no spelling errors um, and that will that will help ensure that your podcast goes into the right buckets on the internet for people to listen to it okay so that's taken us through most of the steps the last thing that you really need to do of course is upload the video. Um, what you might find depending on how your WordPress is installed is that there is a limit um, to how much you're allowed to upload. It could be two megabytes, it could be 20 megabytes and you'll need to either um, modify some files in your WordPress settings or talk to your domain host if you want to get that extended if you need to upload a large um, podcast. And the final thing is to make sure that you back everything up have a backup strategy and have an archiving strategy for storing your podcast files for future use if you want to re-edit them or take some clips out for something else that you do. So I hope you found the video helpful and uh, let me know if you've got any questions. Thank you very much.